Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Before I start, in my last video I said I couldn't reply to comments. Well, now it seems that I can because there is a reply feature. And strangely enough, I thought it wasn't going to notify me about comments. And as a matter of fact, it is. It's, um, so I don't know, maybe they... Maybe they fixed that or something? I don't know. I've heard people having problems with Google Chrome. I'll have to try that out myself, but... Anyway, on today on Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop, I'm going to make a flyback driver circuit, but instead of using a 555 timer or anything like that... <clears throat> don't know why my voice is going all... Uh... Anyway... It's going to be done with op amps, and it's even going to have audio input for pulse width modulation, so I can do singing arcs and things like that. To save time, I've just gone straight ahead and built the circuit. As you can see here, it's a tiny little circuit. We have our op amp, a few resistors, capacitor, and on the end here, the potentiometers for the pulse width and frequency. So now I'm going to fire up the scope and let's see how well it works. Scope's connected. Let's turn on my power supply that I made and see what this circuit does. All right, we have something. I've just realized that all the time while I was talking, I was not picking up the microphone. But yes, we definitely have a waveform on the screen, and it's a nice square wave by the looks of things. So I'm going to adjust this potentiometer here, and we should see the frequency change. And indeed it does. So that's working pretty nicely. Don't know how well you can see that on the screen, because this scope always does look quite faint, although it doesn't look faint in real life. And this should change the frequency, I mean the pulse width. Yes, look at that. In fact, I'm just going to reposition the camera so you can see that a bit better. You can see how the waveform changes as I adjust the pulse width. So I'm just going to leave it back onto square for now. Okay. Still got to clean all that sawdust off from when building the power supply. But let's see the effect of the pulse width modulation on a fan. Oh Clement, I love you. I'm your greatest fan. We've got a pulse width modulation circuit here. And a MOSFET and the fan. So, let's turn it on. See what we get. Oh, it's making a bit of a noise, but it that just might be the frequency that this thing is doing. Let's see if we can change that. Okay, so I'm gonna have to put a better capacitor in there. But as I adjust the pulse width. Alright, we're ready to make this thing power a flyback now. First of all, I'll just go over what we've, what I've done. I've changed the, the capacitor here from... Uh, I don't know what it was before, I think it was 10 nanofarads or something like that. Well, I've changed that to 1 nanofarad, so... The frequency now goes from 15 kilohertz to... Goodness only knows what. I've put the frequency and pulse width potentiometers on this little board for now, so I can just easily adjust them to what I want. Down there, it's good, the frequency is going to be about 50 hertz. Up here, it's going to be, I don't know. Set the pulse width to about 50%. So, it's going to be more or less a perfect square wave. Got a little flyback over here. 
And on this heatsink, a MOSFET and a diode, and it's gonna it's powered off this transformer here. And you might notice that I have put a couple of capacitors across the primary. Just put any old capacitors out I could find. Those are um, both, I think, 0.1 microfarad, so that's going to be something like 0.5, because they're both in series. Anyway, that's enough waffle. Let's turn this on and uh, see what it does. Should be able to see everything. <clears throat> I'm going to turn the oscillator on. Now I'm going to turn the flyback on which remember is on this transformer here, they're on separate transformers. I already know this works because I've already done it. There we are. Although that 15 kilohertz is really going through my head. So I'm going to adjust the frequency. I'm just going to put it back onto the 15 kilohertz for now. I'm going to adjust the pulse width. There's one way I could find out what frequency this really likes. Just adjust this till I hear the maximum am amount of fizzle out of the high voltage end. Okay, I think that's about the highest voltage. Can definitely hear some pin to pin arcing there. Well, that's good. Getting some nice corona there. necessarily the best output though. Well, that's some good corona though. Alright, let's see if we can see that corona any better. I can turn on, I don't put the camera any closer just in case it fries it. Oh yeah, I can see some pins of pin up in there. Can you see that? Good. It looks blue on the screen for some reason. In real life, it looks quite purple. That's a nice corona. One thing I did see was, um, I know you didn't see it in the video, but there was some arcing right there at the primary. The primary was arcing the very core was arcing to the primary, which is not a good thing. And there was also some pins of pin arcing down here, which you also didn't see, but I saw it. So I'm not going to run the flyback like that anymore, but there is one more thing I'm going to try. Now let's try ye olde singing arc. I've connected audio from my tape recorder, which is going into this wire here, so that's going to offset the pulse width. So we're going to modulate the pulse width with the audio from my multi-track tape recorder. Excuse the mess. I've got a tape playing now. I'm just going to turn the power back on. I've turned the frequency back down to 15 kilohertz, so we're not going to get any more pin-to-pin -pin arcing. I said then it's still doing it. My circuit breaker will not stay on. I know it's not tripping it, but... Okay, time to bring out the big guns, or at least the bigger power supply. Now you might remember this from a previous video, well, while well, I've added 
a few things to this, as you can probably see. There is now a third relay in there, which will prevent these two relays from ever being able to turn on until we have enough voltage in the main filter capacitors so that will reduce the risk of a huge inrush current put a little oscillator there a little PWM oscillator there mounted the controls on the front although unfortunately I'm going to have to move this a little bit over because that's now blocking them but anyway I've got that connected to the MOSFETs and the flyback and I've connected the flyback's high voltage ground to the circuit's ground which is connected to the earth so that should reduce the amount of pin to pin arcing also got a 12 volt regulator there for um, powering that little thing so um yeah let's turn this on and see if it works okay we'll just turn it on and make sure these two wires aren't touching because this is my trigger button at the moment which I'm using just which I'm using in place of a momentary switch. This is what turns the other two relays on, connecting the output of this to that. Let's turn it on just briefly. Okay, I heard the relay click. Now I'm going to turn it off and just use what's left in the capacitors to see if it does anything. I think I heard something. I do hear something coming out of the flyback. Um, I don't know where the microphone is. Oh, it's over there by the thing. Again, I forgot to pick up the microphone before I started talking. I forget I'm not using the camera's microphone. I'm using my homemade microphone. I'll just stick it there. You can probably see it in the shot now. I'm going to see if we get an arc off that flyback. And as it's being powered off a much higher voltage now, I think we're going to get something... That's quite a bit more than uh, uh, what we normally get. Actually, I'm going to use this. As you can see, we've got it connected to the flyback's ground. Or the flyback's high voltage ground, I should say. I didn't notice any pin-to-pin -pin arcing. That's a good thing. smoking a bit just make sure that's well discharged and I'm gonna say that's quite a successful experiment did this get hot that's moderately warm but anyway yes um, actually before I go now I hope whoever sent me a message about this is watching this video now I got a message from one of you on Steam the other day about you wanted to sell me a big transformer I was going to reply to that comment later on but I couldn't actually find it and I'm just to let you know that I am still interested and if you do still have it just send me a PM on YouTube or whatever and um, we'll try to work something out but anyway be rude of me to not try singing up with this, wouldn't it? So let's hear the elderly brothers or the Warner brothers or whatever the hell they're called through a singing arc. That's about all I can do because that wire is getting really hot now. So anyway, now until next time, goodbye. Well, goodbye for this video anyway.